Okay, we are live. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Uh, tonight Hello. we have a Community Board 10 Police and Public Safety Committee with the following agenda. Okay. We have an SLA corporate change application for 7221 someplace else doing business as Catch 22, located at 7221 Third Avenue. A new SLA liquor, wine, beer, cider license at Marway Restaurant Corporation, located at 6602 14th Avenue. SLA renewal application at Malai Restaurant Corporation, doing business as Blue Door Sulaki, 8413 Third Avenue, including a change of method of operation. Tonight, we'll start with Catch 22. Okay, this is, I'm trying to see who's present from Catch 22. Yeah, so I see uh, Vincent Gifredo is here. Hi, guys. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Sandy. Vincent, can you hear us? Hello, Vincent. All right, so let's start. He has his, um, it's on mute. So if yeah. he's talking with Danny, um, Vincent, yeah, you're on mute. If we just hit the space bar. Can you hear me? Yes. I can yes. Barely hear you, but I can make you out, Vincent. Can you hear us? At the beginning, this is a corporate chain for Catch 22. 7221 someplace else LTD doing business as Catch 22. Uh, the, this will be a 100% corporate change removing Michael Gufredi and adding Vincent J. Gufredi. No other changes to the application. When I was Correct. Okay. So you are now becoming the 100% owner of the uh, establishment. Yes. Right. You have a license since 2013, I believe. Going back to your original. Um, uh, let's see. No, I, I believe. Um, I believe oh, my you... brother's been on the uh, license yeah, I since that. 2002. Hmm. Would have operated as AM bar prior. Twist AM bar and catch 22. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what are your hours of operation? Because we're amending your original license. Am I correct? Um, I don't. I don't think we're amending anything. I think it's uh, everything staying as is. Okay. On the original license, you have operation just 12, 12, 12, 12. So I don't know what that means. Is it Monday through Friday, twelve o'clock? Closing or twelve noon? Well, till when? well, we're open seven days a week. Mm -hmm. We're we're open seven days a week now. Um, now it's eleven a.m. I'm sorry, Vincent. You're coming very broken up. Can you repeat that? Eleven a.m. And depending on what time we close. And what time Weeknights is usually earlier than the weekends, obviously, but um, 3.45 a.m. On the weekdays, it just depends. All right. We also have in the past, you know, there were several noise complaints. I'm not aware. The previous stipulation, I'm just going to read it off, you know, that was dated. Oh, from 2013. Right. You have, well, yeah. It was a duly publicized community board 10 held on Monday, six, Monday, September 16, 2013. Community members of community board 10 and Michael Gofrino agreed upon the following stipulations applied to the method of operation sent forth in his application to the New York State Liquor Authority for a liquor wine beer license with the establishment known as 7221 Someplace Else LTD, 7221 Third Avenue, Brooklyn. Roped off area outside the establishment security personnel to walk the perimeter of the outside establishment in an effort to move patrons away from the residence 
residential block and to keep the outside area free of gathering of patrons. The windows of the establishment must be closed by 10.30 p.m. The establishment must keep noise levels within legal decibel. And that was dated October 4th, 2013, signed by Michael. Chris, if I may. Yeah. Please. Chris? Yes, go ahead. Is that Barbara? Yeah, if, if I remember correctly, I believe that we've yes. had uh, several I'm complaints aware. just last year about Correct. the noise and people loitering in the late hours. And I also, um, you can't have hours of, it depends. There have to be definite hours that the committee and the community agree upon. So the, the okay. answer of depends that doesn't work. That should be written in the application very specifically. That, that I understand that, but you know, the New York State liquor license is till 4 a.m. every right. morning. So by law, we're allowed to stay open till 4. I just mean it depends when it's slow, we close at midnight. It's just I, right. I don't make them stay open till 4 a.m. Your application needs to have specific hours that we all, you know, have consensus about that we do with every establishment. Right, Barbara, this this was um no I it's understandable. So you can put 4 a.m. with the I'm not gonna argue with you. I'm just telling you what. We do here as a community, Josephine. Yeah, the. Uh, I'm, I'm the, sorry, you broke up. I don't. I don't know if I missed something. Yeah, I just want to say the committee, the adoption of this, um, according to our records, was back in 2013. Um, it was licensed prior to um, the board's initiation of of stipulation agreements. Um, the SLA has his license listed as 12 p.m. to 4 a.m. Seven days a week. Yeah, I mean, we only started open at 11 um, when the pandemic, when we opened right after the pandemic, because mm -hmm. uh, the hours were cut shorter. So, and it just helps with deliveries. So uh, at 11 o'clock in the morning, are you serving patrons? Well, technically we could, but no, there's probably nobody there till three in the afternoon. But in order mm -hmm. to get deliveries, the... Um, the, the suppliers now, um, they don't, they basically come to Bay Ridge, they give you a date. So if you want to order Budweiser, we'll just say the Budweiser truck comes to Bay Ridge, it's 9 a.m. You have to have somebody there at 9 a.m. to collect it or else you don't get it for four or five days, sometimes even for a week. So it's, it's been a bit of a struggle, but um, that's what I had to do. Yes, sir. So let me ask you this. I, I understand the State Liquor Authority has stipulated that you can close at four o'clock in the morning. All right. Yeah. Do you stay open at four o'clock in the morning? More so. Well, I mean, de we're definitely open till four in the morning. I would say 75% of the time. <laughs> All right. Are you amicable to closing earlier than that? All right, because we've been getting complaints in the area. All right, I believe if my notes serve me correct. In 2022, there were 22 complaints of 311, and year to date, we have eight. So they have somehow come down a little bit as to year to date. Right. I'm, I'm unaware of the complaints. Um, usually the police department, if they come by, um, right. there's been no issues. There's been no summonses. There, there's been nothing. So, I mean, as far as we were concerned, we're doing a great job over there. Obviously, okay. you get calls we don't know about. Mm -hmm. In the past, though, I can tell you, when we were made aware, um, we did everything in our power to try and you know, rectify it. Understood. Uh, yeah. The, um, I just want to say um, that when, when a resident calls 311, there is a response um, from the police department. So I, I think we need to reach out to the police and not on this call today, 
um, 22 noise complaints in 22 and eight so far this year, there should have been some contact. And if there's not, I think we need to reach out to the mm -hmm. man for sure. And just for clarification, Vincent, you were part owner before this. Now you're going to 100% owner? Yes, he was part owner and now he's uh, going to assume full. I don't know if you're there. Were you there every day, Vincent, or you just, you know, taking over now? Vincent, can you hear us? Because we had this last year and we. we yeah, had something that you had done, Barbara. Two, yeah, two years ago. Yeah. In no, no, my brother, my brother is the owner. I was the manager. Okay. So now you're becoming the owner. But as the manager, you would know that the neighbors. No, I'm not there every day. Um, I mean, I stop in most days, but I'm not. I'm not there from opening to closing. I can hear you. Okay, good. I'm glad. Uh, yeah, so, the complaints were not good. All right. Yeah. So, is there anyone on the uh, from the public on? Or any Correct. other questions from the board Which first? is why a lot of times the, the, the calls are frivolous. Oh, yeah, I understand, you know, that you may think they're frivolous, but to us, they're, they mean something. We represent the community. I mean, all I can tell you is, I mean, since the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I lost you again. What I, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. We can keep cutting Good in and out. out. So, Hello? Yeah, no, I hear you now. Go ahead, Vincent. Can you hear me? I hear you now, Vincent. Can you hear us? No, absolutely. Listen, I'm not, you know, there, there's been, well, did you say there's people come in, they've tested noise with decibel meters and stuff like that. Um, I can't hear him. Am I the only one having trouble? I'm, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm in a parking lot at my son's baseball practice. I apologize. Um, so, yeah, yes, I hear you. So basically okay. what I'm saying is that, I mean, I, there could be times that the police pull up, but when they pull up are a decibel, so they leave. That's what I meant by frivolous. Okay. Well, these were complaints about the neighbors Sorry. because you close so late. The people are loitering on their stoops. They're urinating on on their front porches because you're one of, you're one of the only ones that are still open to 4 a.m. Anything we've done in the last five or six years, we've had um, very amenable business owners that are willing to close usually around two. All Most of the people we've worked with have been very amenable to that. Right. Yeah, I'm not saying we don't close to two. I'm just saying some nights were open till four. Um, I mean, and in the past, you know, across the street from us, there was a business that had a lot of lot of issues. So you know, I I as much as. I, I've seen, I've been in this business here, you know, at my brother's place for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. So I, I can tell you this, we have many, many, many of the neighbors that frequent our place and we're involved there. I, all I can tell you is even in the, because her boyfriend was in the bar, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough business to deal with that kind of stuff. So when we are made aware, we do take precaution. So the windows are closed. The music does get set down. We do have security, you know, as far as checking IDs and, you know, walking the perimeter. That's, you know, there's only so much I could do when people leave the establishment. I, I don't know what they do. I don't follow them home. Um, but I do know there was the place across the street, the Mexican restaurant. They, I mean, they had youngsters running around there. There was trouble every single night. And they're now closed. You know, and those guys are right still now. over towards out. We please. handle that one. We're talking about yours right now. Yes, I, un I understand no, no. that. But You're unaware I understand when that, when manager, there's a place that's packed. And there were 22 and now 30 complaints. It's very disheartening to have you, um, in, in my opinion, and, in, and for most of our establishments to be open to four o'clock in the morning where our residents and our community members that we represent 
really have no relief, you know, until it's time to wake up in the morning. I don't, I don't know that I, I only abide by the rules of the state. That's, you know, the state, when we applied for a liquor license, you know, they charge you a certain amount and that's just the way it is. Like I said, every bar has the option to stay open to four. And I be honest with you, most do. So I, I don't know. Um, I don't know what else to say. We close some nights early when it's quiet on Sundays and Mondays and Tuesdays when the dart leagues go home and stuff like that. It's quiet. They go home on Fridays and Saturdays when it's busy. You know, the neighborhood has people all over it. So we stay open. There's a, a very things, small window to actually make money and pay bills. A lot of the things you're saying that are just not true. What we try to do is we try to work with our establishments so that we both work hand in hand with our community people that are sleeping and trying to have a good quality of life and with people who are trying to make a living. And, you know, I, I, I know I may be coming down hard on you, but we've had uh, numerous complaints and we represent the community. And I really feel that you have to be willing to work with us. And uh, I don't see that happening right now. Well, I don't understand what you mean by work with you. Four o'clock is too late. The Four o'clock is, is, is really early in the morning. So there are people sleeping in the area. And the um, Chris, you have, a, I'm sorry. you have a <laughs> hand raised, uh, Lori Willis. Lori. I think. Um, so I, you know, the, this um, place has been in the neighborhood for a very long time. Um, I mean, I remember from the time that I was chair prior to the time that Barbara was chair. I think, you know, there's a history here, and and you've been involved with the premises for a very long time. And I, I you know, remember right, certain right. things going on, and also during COVID, um, you know, I, there was there's a lot of history here with the neighborhood. So I think that. You know, and, and post COVID, we all know that enforcement has been somewhat lax. I'm not going to beat around the bush, you know, in terms of, you know, when the police come out, um, you know, there's a different attitude, um, you know, toward nightlife in the city. And that's fine. But I think maybe what um, might be being expressed by some of the members is a little bit of frustration because I think that it is sort of disingenuous not to acknowledge that there has been some static around your location in the neighborhood for whatever reason. Um, and so I think what maybe when some of the members say work with us or, you know, maybe. Um, well, I, I let me just cut you off. For you a know, maybe some it's, it's a bit, would go a long it, way. I can say this. Listen, I, I come on to this Zoom meeting with the best intentions. I've always made myself available when I was the manager and my brother, when he was the owner, he fell ill. That's why I'm I've taken such a, um, you know, a, a bigger part in this place. Okay. Mm. So I've always been available. I used to come to the meetings when they were in person and anytime there was an issue, we handled it. Like if there was, there was some breaking up a little bit more. Breaking right? up. I remember we came to a meeting once and there was a woman so upset. We wound up dry. All I could say is a, I feel as though you're saying there's a history. And what I feel is there's a fantastic history because this business has been there over a hundred years and it's been run by the same family for the last 20 years. Uh, I'm sorry. I can't, we can't hear you again. And it's still there without any notches on its liquor license. Any pending lawsuits and no real problems. I'm sorry. I'm. I'm. It's frustrating. I'm trying to speak. Nobody hears me. So no, I, I hear only you. bits and you're pieces. Breaking you're, you're, you're breaking up. You're breaking up. That's You you come in and out. So we're catching like every other word sometimes. So nobody's ignoring you. Can you hear me, Vincent? So, Josephine, I do have a question. Um, sure. You know, do do we have um, any response from any people in the community? Um, do we have any feedback um, from the precinct? Right, right. I, I, and again, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Wait, wait, one what second. I'm I'm we are not disingenuous. Vincent, I'm sorry. I was asking, hold on a second. I was asking the district manager a question. Just one, one sec. 
Um, yes. So yeah. there is a yes. I I believe there may be some residents on the call today. Um, following public notice, um, we did hear from two residents who called um, to say that there are some um, continue to be late night um, noise issues, and. We did invite the 68th precinct. I do not see them on the call as of yet. There's been some staffing um, issues with the 68 with community affairs. Um, so they're not on this call tonight. Uh, I was hoping they would be, Lori, um, but they're not. So I do know there are members of the public on the call tonight. Okay. Any other questions from board members right now? Does anybody from the public want to speak? If you, if a member of the public wants to speak, just use your your hand raise function. How do you do that? Oh, okay. Um, Vicky DeLuca. Ah. Uh, okay, you could speak. Hi, good evening, everyone. So, um, yes, I did have problems with them in the past. The only problem that I have now is the seven days a week into the early morning. Um, I get what Vincent is trying to say, but respectfully, you're not there all the time. So you don't really know what's going on until what time it's going on until. And recently it has been going on till about three, four in the morning, Monday through Sunday. What, what type of incidents are we talking about, Vicky? Like We're talking about question. the loud music, the doors being open and not closed after a certain time. Mostly the loud music. The weekends I get, I have no problem with. But during the week, you know, I work for a hospital. I have to get up and take care of sick people as well. And mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to do so when the music is going till 2, 3 in the morning. I also have an issue with, you know, I get that you guys are a bar, but if you can see, if you come out on a Saturday morning to go do groceries or something, there's Corona bottles, beer bottles all outside, like the bouncers. I don't know if you allow it, Vincent, but just so you know, if you're not there, people are coming outside with glass beer bottles, glass cups from inside the bar and being able to hang out outside drinking that. Like you don't even want to go in and out your house because you don't know people are drunk. They do stupid things like it's not a safe situation. Vicky, if I can right, yeah, that's question. unfortunate. I, 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 can you hear me? I can. I hear you. Go ahead, Vincent. You can go. Oh, Vincent, hi, Vicky. Uh, so I, I apologize for that. Um, what, what I could say is sometimes people, I guess, sneak stuff out. Obviously, security does not let. Um, but what I could say is I will tighten it up. And I will make sure that doesn't happen. Right. Um, and I know that there was tell a period them to be on top of it. I know there was a period of time where you did tighten it up, but just so you know, it's not like that anymore. And I I am here. I see it with my own two eyes. I'm coming home from like family functions or stuff, and I'm getting out of a car at 12 o'clock at night, and there's a crowd of people in front of the house again. They're letting them congregate in front on the benches, drunk, hanging out. I see the bouncers in the front, they do nothing about it. And, and I mean, it's not okay. Sometimes I come out of a car at 1130 at night with family and I have to deal with people sitting on the wood next to my house on the benches and they have glass bottles in their hand. I mean, it's just not okay. Yeah, but how can we be sure that they're coming from our place? Because I, I see them coming like, in and out. They're coming out from the bar and they have glass bottles of Corona in their hand. Over that block, there's... There's been people drinking Coronas out there since I'm 15 years old. No, of course. I know I, that. I understand I that, but you have a public bench in front of okay. your apartment. I mean, I can't <laughs> kick people off of there. If they're coming from my place, that would be that. But I mean, the whole block there is like, there's people out there all hours of the night. Maybe you should take drinking. a closer, they're not from my business. A closer look at, the, the, at your cameras because they are coming from your establishment. I wouldn't be making that up. I mean, I watch the cameras pretty diligently when I'm not there. Um, okay. I will take a closer look again. And again, I apologize. I'm not um, going to argue. I'm just for, for those of you who don't know, no, right. Vicky on. and I go I, way back. I understand. I understand. Okay. All right. Uh, Vincent, you hire security? Yeah, we have only on Fridays and Saturdays. 
Mm -hmm. Chris, is that listed in the application and do we have the security company name? No, I don't. Well, that, that's an incomplete application as well as not having the specific hours. Well, he didn't submit a new application. No. But that's just going be. on a renewal from his old. Having security should be on an application. I was thinking that's a new one. Um, we have another question, a hand raised, Chris, from the public. Jeff Cohen. Jeff? Cohen. Yes, I just have two comments. I know the law is 4 a.m., but most bars who are open from 4 a.m. aren't in residential areas. And my second thing is, doesn't management have to be at the bar during working hours? I mean, some sort of management or owner, or I don't know what the rules are, but who at the bar has to be there in a, I guess, supervisory management position. Okay, thank you. So, I don't know, Vincent, do you have a manager on site at all times? Well, we, I'm the GM, so I'm the general correct. manager. Uh, correct, I understand. But every, every night employee acts as a manager. They're all trained mm -hmm. and, you know, they, they're all well versed and they've all been there for a very long time. I have no new employees. Okay. Any other questions? No. Nope. nope, that's all, Chris. So, any motions from the floor? Chris, I just think that unless the stipulations you know, are very specific in terms of the hours of operations, having a specific manager and not just employees mm -hmm. who are there, who are legally allowed to supervise, that would hold, hold up in a court of law. Mm -hmm. um, you can have a, a bartender or a waitress now, you know, supervising for the night. And we have specific hours that we can agree to with um, Mr. Gufredo. Um, I, I, I mean, I really hate to say that, you know, we're, we're not going to do this, but I think that there have to be very specific sets of stipulations, which he's agreed to, because right. we've had numerous dozens of complaints from our community members who live there. There are other bars and maybe people are hanging out and drinking beer from other bars or from a supermarket. We all know that. But our complaints in the, from last year are very specific from this bar. The people leave extremely late and loiter on people's stoops and urinate and defecate and leave beer bottles from that specific bar. So I would want very specific stipulations that he would agree to with this community showing that he is, you know, on board with being a good citizen with our community members. Um, otherwise, I would, you know, I hate to say that I would say no, but I would need uh, specific stipulations that we can you know, work together with. Okay, Sandy has his hand. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, yeah, I, I myself, uh, after hearing everything, uh, would would find it hard to to agree to uh, with the, with this business. Uh, I I would need uh, uh, less hours. Uh, I, I I would not agree to uh, four o'clock in the morning. I think uh, we need to uh, to reel that in. And um, it, it just seems that that every time we, 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 we ask him something, it, it's always uh, not my bar or I don't know or, you know, it, 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 the, the I don't know doesn't work anymore. It, it, it just doesn't. He has to be more more responsible you know, as a business Sandy, owner. I'm, no, 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 no. I'm speaking now. Do not interrupt me. You do not interrupt me. I'm the one that's speaking now. After I speak, you can just say whatever you want. Stop interrupting people. Hey, so, listen, you take so, it easy. Don't yell at me. I'm no, not no, no, you take right, it easy. I'm not going to sit hey, there and be attacked by, talk, by somebody who doesn't got, know me or to, doesn't know my business. Vincent, Vincent, hold okay. off, right? Let, let Sandy Vallis speak and then I'll let you speak. I interrupted okay? nobody. I'll, I'll, Vincent, you I'll guys can't hear me. Afterwards, okay? 
please. Sandy, finish what you're saying, please. All right. I, All you right. Know, I, 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 I just find it very hard for me to agree to, uh, to, to, to this, this business operation. Uh, he, he's going he's gonna to start interrupting people. He's going to say, it's not my business. Right. He's going to say, I'm not there. And it's always, it's, it's always the, not me. You know what? I mean, we, we have residents here that, that wake up every morning to go to work. It's not fair to these people because this guy wants to be an irresponsible owner. Okay. Vincent, you can speak now. Yes. Calling me an irresponsible owner is just ignorant. I am within the law to stay open till 4 a.m. seven days a week, 24, uh, 365 days a year. I break no laws there. We are mm -hmm. active in the community. We have a ton of customers that live on the block. Okay. Are the customers you say leaving and urinating on stuff? No, I cannot say that that's them because I don't know them. I don't know if that happened or not. People make complaints all the time on businesses, on Yelp, on all these websites. For the malaise. I don't know if somebody's lying or telling the truth. What I do know is I've had the same staff, the same people on Friday and Saturday nights for almost 15 years have been working there. There's been no issues, no problems. The police come and they leave. They say, hey, great job, and they leave. We have zero issues there. So I'm being made aware tonight of some noise violations that we were unaware of. We are aware of Vicky for 15 years we have spoken to Vicky next door. There is no, that's the only solution. I've tried, I, I'm very nice to her. I've done everything I can. All I can tell you is that we lower the music at night. We don't stay open a second past 4 a.m. And that's usually on the weekends. During the weekdays, three o'clock, two o'clock, I'm unaware. Some nights, to some nice people in there drinking, they get to stay. We don't get them out. It's a business. We're there to try and pay bills and make money. I understand. And as far as disrespecting people, you were disrespectful to me. You're trying to be. There's been a few people on here today that have been very disrespectful. And so, I don't deserve that. I came here tonight out of good faith. Okay, Vincent. Now, I want to come to some type of amicable agreement. You're on site. So, that was Monday crazy. through Thursday, you say you close about 2 o'clock? Roughly, yes. Okay. So if I put that in my stipulation, would that be fine? No. Okay. I would have to speak to my lawyer about that because I don't really know what that means. Okay. All right. Your lawyer is not on this call tonight. Okay. No. Any other questions from the board? Uh, Lori has her hand raised. Lori. Um, I'm just curious, what's the timeline on this? Um, that we have to give our, you know, weigh in on this by because we usually get what, 30 days? 30 days, That's right. So by our, our um June board meeting, we have to. Um... Well, I mean, Vincent, you know, in, in fairness, Vincent might want to speak with his attorney and maybe yeah. Joe. I know that we wanted to reach out to the 68th precinct. Um, you know, is there any way we can kind of circle back on this or do we not have time? Um, the uh, the times, the stamp of the notification was May 19. So that means we have until June 19th. Um, if he wants to speak to um, his attorney, he could get back to us before the um, July, uh, I'm sorry, the June 15th board meeting. And because this is a, this is a corporate change um, application, I could ask the state liquor authority. I'm not sure if this is a, this originally was a 500 foot hearing. Um, I don't know if that, I don't believe that's, that, uh, a 500 foot hearing rules in place with a full corporate change. I'm mm -hmm. not 100% sure. Um, if it is, that means a little bit more time. 
um, because it takes some time before a, a 500 foot hearing is um, scheduled. But if, if he wants to speak to his attorney and get back to us before the um, June 15th board meeting, I guess that's up to the committee. I just thought maybe it's a possibility could be helpful. Yeah, I thought so also. Uh, is, I believe your initial license was up for renewal. Am I correct, Vincent? I believe it expires at some time in September. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Chris? Yeah, I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that. And in the meantime, perhaps he can, you know, look at having specific hours, writing down his security company, mm -hmm. finding a way to address the concerns of the community, as in a as all the other establishments that do that work with us, um, you know, willing to work with us. I mean, if if you're not willing to work with us before you have a license, what is it going to be later on? So oh. maybe we'll mm -hmm. have some time to do that. And so that we can come back um, with more uh, agreeable terms with, with right. specific stipulations. And that's fine with us. Mm -hmm. Well, I believe I am working with you because I'm picking up the stipulations from AM bar. Those aren't from catch 22. Those are from AM right. bar. Well, that the was business model. No, 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 yeah, the yeah. Um, 2013 stipulations were That's part of this, this corporation. Right. Yeah, believe, well, it's all the same corporation. And Michael signed it. I Michael say. signed it. Yeah. Yes, correct. My, Michael signed it, but that was AM bar. Mm -hmm. Well, it didn't have a DBA at the time. I, I don't really know the history. It was 10 years ago, but it was this corporation. Yes, it was the same corporation. Correct. Uh, Lori, did you have your hand raised or is it up from before? I do. Um, I just, I have a question um, for Michael. Um, I'm sorry, for Vincent. Vincent, yes. um, so now, so you were manager and now you're going to be owner. Is there like, is there a full-time manager on the premises? Is there, like, how does it work? Well, so the, the business, I'm, I'm the general manager. Okay. So the staff is all trained. Everybody that works there during the day and night, I've handpicked and hand trained over the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. Actually, Kenneth and Veronica have been there longer than me. So they were trained by my brother who trained me. So they kind of showed me the things I needed to learn when my brother got sick. So okay. they act, Kenny on paper, Kenneth Legros on paper is a bartender slash manager. Veronica is a bartender slash manager. Mm -hmm. If that if that makes sense, so it it does, and and I, just that's why when you say, "Oh, there's got to be a manager on site," I'm like, "There is a manager on site." Who is the bartender? Also, am I correct? Say that again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The manager is also your bartender. Is there anybody else beside the bartender correct. manager on site at the time besides security on? No, the, the, listen. Saturday? I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the place. But it's a very small place. You can you, you can't have a manager and a bartender. The place will go out of business in three months. Mm -hmm. But you need security. If it's such a small place, that well, yes, because on the weekends you need yes, on the weekends there there are more crowds. So you need somebody to control the door. And you need security. That raises my worries. All we're saying is that we don't have we don't have a problem with coming back when you know you, you have a very clear understanding of what we as a community board representing our citizens really expect you know working with the, uh, uh, I'm a citizen am I not I mean I understand I, I just I don't like the attack no, on me on like, like we're doing we're we're saying we're 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 on one hand but on the other hand you you do the big butt so if we're just going to come back doing this again I mean I hate to say we will say no right now I, I, I'm not a person to do that I would like for you to say let's work together to perhaps lower our hours, name a security company. Um, you know, the idea of you have Monday manager, Tuesday manager is something that doesn't really fit well with me and many of our community members when over the past year and a half, you have 33 one complaints. So, you know, that's all I'm gonna say. 
I've said it over and over again, um, and, and that's it for me, Josephine. But you know, I, attitudes have to be better. I understand. It's going to be a no for me. I do understand what you're saying, but I think you're not understanding that there's not a bar in Bay Ridge or a restaurant in Bay Ridge yeah. that has a manager on hand or at all times. That's just and not. Have that's thirty-three just not possible. complaints in a year and a half. Right. And the person there doesn't. And, and, exactly and probably 30 of them are from Vicky. So, right now we're going to table this and revisit it. Okay. Okay. Vincent? Yes. Confer with your attorney, all right, uh, on the hours. Come back to us with your application and, or let us know what security firm you do utilize. All right. The name of the firm is Proteus. Thank you. Okay. They also do Cattle Black, Salty Dog, and mm -hmm. I believe Cebu. Okay. Um, and, I'm sorry. Lori, you have your hand raised. Yeah. So, I mean, I think just, you know, so everyone, you know, we're tabling it, but I think that it would be a good idea to sort of put together. Um, you know, in, in fairness to Vincent and, mm -hmm. you know, everyone, um, like what we want to know and what we want to see. So, you know, I mean, I guess about the hours of operation, um, you know, the security when they're there, you know, they're there every night. Um, and I guess sort of, you know, usually what we look for is that there's someone on the premises, um, you know, who's providing supervision. Sometimes when we have incidents um, where we've got neighbor complaints, you know, we have a number that you provide to the board, like somebody's cell phone number we can call or that the residents can reach out to, um, you know, like to address things. So I get like, those are the things we usually look for. So, I mean, just in fairness to Vincent, you know, instead, of, so when we table this, just to make it productive and say, hey, this is what we're coming back and we're looking for, I think that would be fair and helpful. Lori, thank you. That that sounds very fair. I do understand. I agree. So uh, what we'll do is... My, just so you know, my number is the number. Vicky used to reach out to me all the time. She doesn't reach out to me anymore. I had no idea she still had a problem okay yeah um so it's i just want you know, to so say, i just want to say for the so record from it's, my not, it's not only it's not only vicky um and i mean we treat all complaints equally but um you know as, as indicated in the chat it's you know the complaints are, are not just from one person so i don't want to i don't want to point one finger i just want no, to that's fine but what i'm saying is in the past you know i've left my phone number i've tried to you know, when I know the person has a problem, I try to rectify it. I've given my phone number out, spoke to them on the phone. I've met them in person. I, I don't have a problem with that. I just, I don't, I don't like feeling attacked. Like, well, um, like the business is this detriment to the neighborhood when I have a lot of people that come in there that feel the opposite, especially since the pandemic. So it's, it's, it feels awkward for me to sit here and be attacked when I came to this meeting in good faith. I mean, nothing's changing in the business besides the name of the owner. So it was, it's a little odd to me to be getting attacked from all angles. Well, I think there was a uh, complaints also in 2019. Am I correct, Barbara? She's muted when you would share. Yeah, I mean, I remember bringing this up and it was one of the, um, the more <laughs> disheartening meetings that I had because okay. like Josephine said it wasn't like you know two or three people where they're just annoyed with the bar it was a whole page of the, the 311 complaints and you know we work very closely with the establishments we try to find any way possible you know to get the liquor license and to work um with the the managers and the owners and I don't want you to feel that you know this is just an attack with you but most people who come to our meetings when they're in the application process. And even after that, they are wholeheartedly saying, what can I do to make things better? How can I fix this? I was, I was aware of that, but I wasn't in control. And I, I don't feel, and maybe, you know, it, it's just what, you know, the stress of this meeting that you're coming off with, 
Um, the law says I could be here till four o'clock and that's what I'm gonna do. You know, the law for New York State is extremely broad, but we are a community that we really work for the quality of life. And almost every bar owner um, works with us and doesn't come out saying things like, but the law says I could do it this way. And that doesn't come off great for us, for, and for the people we represent. So, you know, coming to us with a, a different attitude that you want to work with us now and in the future to make your reputation of your bar and to help the community members who live in the surrounding area uh, coming in with a little bit of a different attitude um, would have um, worked a little better tonight. I, I understand. And I apologize if you feel that way. But the reason I feel that way is because I have been here. This isn't my first community board meeting. I've yeah. been at them for a long time. I used to be the manager of the place back in 2002 to 2006. Then again, in 2013 to 2023, I've gone to the community board meetings, the, uh, the police department, you know, when they have their meetings. I go to all this stuff. I make my staff go to this stuff. But for I, you I'm not say... somebody who's new to this. For you to say that, you know, you weren't aware of the almost three dozen complaints we've had in the last year and a half or two years is not good. But, uh, but I'm asking you, you're saying how, you're there. Okay. how could I be right. made aware? How could I be made aware? Josephine. And, unless you're, you're telling yeah. me that, I, I, I had no idea of them. It's when the week. police pull up at night, they come and check the place from the outside. They look, they say, hey, there's no problems here. We got a report. There was a fight. There's no fight. They leave. You know, we, we've had calls that there's somebody with a gun. There's somebody with a knife. There's crazy calls that come in all the time on these businesses. They show up to the door. Look, they say, all right, guys, everything's good. All right. So and we're, we're going to, Vincent, thank you very much. You know, uh, we'll be in contact with you and we're going to revisit this. All right. As soon as we get some more facts. And also, Yes, we'll, we'll talk. Something where we could be more amicable on. Okay. Hey, are these meetings always Zoomed or yes. are they ever in person? Yes. The, the general Usually board meeting Zoom. is in person. The committee meetings have been on Zoom. The committee meetings have been on Zoom. Okay. The board meeting is I, in I person. Think the, I think part of the problem is I feel you guys aren't hearing what I'm saying. I'm yelling because. I feel I'm, you're saying I'm breaking up. I don't know what's getting through, what's not. I, I have no idea. I only hear some of the things you're saying. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. All right so we'll move on to the next agenda item, Chris. Vincent, thank you very much. So, thank oh, you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next item, item on the agenda. Is Magway Restaurant Corporation located at 6602 14th Avenue? And this is for a new liquor license. Uh, the establishment will be a restaurant. The owner is Maria Huerta Heradio. And did I pronounce that correct, Maria? Heradio. No. Okay, thank Maria you. Maria Huerta. And you also have another restaurant on Graham Avenue, am I correct? So from no, she, used, she used to work there um, as a cook and a person in charge of the restaurant. So is that going to be a manager? Uh, no, she wasn't a manager. She was the chef. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Your hours of operation on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. Uh, your occupancy will be approximately 50 p. You have a C of O for 55. Music, you say some nights you might have live music or acoustical music with background. You will be hiring a DJ some nights. And if so, Maria? No, it's not no DJ. It's just live music. No DJ? No DJ. It wasn't marked on the questionnaire. No, no, I'm here. That's DJ. That's why I'm asking. Right. All right. 
So live music, what type of live music are we talking about? Is it a, a, a... It's gonna be instrumental. It's Mexican uh, instrumental music mm -hmm. where, where people play the guitar, the very, very low music. Is there going to be any outside dining? No, she doesn't have any backyard at all. It's just okay. indoor. Any questions from the board? Yeah, Chris. Andy? Um, when, when you say you're going to have uh, guitars, are these guitars going to be hooked up to amplifiers at all, or are they just acoustic? No, no, it's, it's acoustic. So uh, it's no, amp acoustic. no amplifiers. No, 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 no. It's just okay. a simple guitar. On our application, it is listed as acoustic. Okay. Right, right. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Judith, I see a hand in front of my face. <laughs> Judith, you're on mute. Can you hear us, Judith? Can you hear us? You're on mute again, Judy. Hmm. I think I lost her. Yeah, I think we lost her. Any other questions? Nope, I don't see any others. Okay. So, Maria, the way we do this is we usually look to deny your application unless you agree to the following stipulation. So, I'm going to make a motion. Stop smiling, Barbara. <laughs> do you have a question, Barbara? No, no. Oh, okay. I'm just smiling that she's probably holding her breath with this meeting. <laughs> I know. I'm thinking the same thing. So the stipulation for you is the premise will operate a restaurant. There will be no sale consumption of alcohol on the premise until the appropriate license is issued by the SLA. Application will not serve or allow bring your own booze BYOB until license is obtained. The owner and manager will be on site during all hours of operation. The hours of operation will be Sunday through Monday, 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. There will be no smoking permitted. Background recorded and or music sound levels will, be will remain below the level permitted by New York City Noise Code. Once the SLA license is obtained, the committee community board may call upon the applicant to address any concerns that may arise. There will be at least 20% visibility view into the establishment at high level. The applicant agrees that should it change its method of operation, it will give notice and meet with the community boards and committee. That's my motion. Any discussion? Chris, I'll second the motion. Mm -hmm. Anybody from the uh, community speaking on, on call? Do you see? No, I don't see any. So call the motion. Okay, so all in all favor, in just raise your hand. Okay. Lori? Um, Nick, you're good. Okay. It's okay. Unanimous. Any opposed? Any absents? Unanimous. Okay, Maria, we'll be voting at the board meeting on Thursday, June 15th at 7 p.m. Um, if you wanted to send a representative there, if not, um, we'll, we will call you once the stipulation agreement is prepared. Okay. Got it. Thank you. I'll be there. Okay. I'll okay. okay. Good luck to you, Maria. Thanks. Okay. Next item on the agenda is uh, Malloy Restaurant Corporation doing business as Blue Door. All right. This is a change of method of operation and a renewal. Right. The change of method of operation is they'll be using the rear yard as part of their establishment. Yes, and this is a restaurant wine um, only license? Correct, well, wine and beer only and cider. Right. My apologies. And I think the owner of Blue Door is, she was here. Sorry, give me one second. <laughs> Sorry. I think she ran away. I didn't see you, okay. <laughs> Sitting in a car to escape my children, and my car just shut down. <laughs> okay, uh, what was said? I didn't. I didn't get a chance to hear. No, no. I was just going over your application, Blue Door. The method of operation is 
you're changing the method of operation by utilizing the backyard from what I understand. And you're a yes. beer, wine, and cider applicant. Yes. yes. So you're basically, you're updating your license, am I correct? Yes. Okay. To include the rear portion of the yard. Now, there was some noise complaints from the rear yard, but I think they have subsided. Am I correct, Josephine? Yeah, there was only a, a handful. I think there were two. Um, mm -hmm. It was the same woman. I'm sorry to cut you off. Yeah. Um, and the... Um, and I think once uh, Dorothy found out that there were noise complaints, uh, she contacted uh, Blue Door. Yes, she did. And they rectified the situation. What I understand. I think there, um, there is a resident on the call today. Okay. Their, their hand raised. Unless you want to do committee questions first. Let's do the committee questions first. Any questions from the committee? Okay. And the oh, Lori. Oh, just Lori has her hand raised. I'm okay. sorry. Oh, there you go. So I was just wondering if we could hear from um, the applicant just about, you know, how, what do you plan on doing in the back? You know, what's your vision for it? I, it's just like an extension of the actual restaurant. So we just use it um, for like additional seating um, because of the way we built it. A lot of people have been asking to do private parties. So we do throw, you know, like showers and things of that nature in the backyard. Um, nothing like after 11 o'clock at night. Parties are only um, between 12 and 3 and like 1 and 4, just because it's too busy at night for us to have a private party. Um, and then it's just being used as a regular restaurant with background music. Mm -hmm. And what time do you shut the music off in the back? Um, during the week, it's till 10 o'clock. And then on the weekend, it's 11. Um, and then on Sundays, it's nine. We close at nine. Usually we ask the applicants to shut their music down at 10 o'clock on any outside music. Am I correct, uh, Barbara, with their hand up? Barbara, you're on mute. No, I just looked this up for something else. And I believe the New York City ordinance is uh, 10 o'clock. Yeah. yeah, I know that. That's for all uh, outdoor yeah. permits, I understand. Yeah, it's it 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. That's why I was just uh, I also, that. How many seats are you talking about in the backyard? It's like 32, 35 maybe. That's a lot. Any other questions? Mm, I don't see any committee members. Uh, there is a member of the public. Okay, please. Um, you should be able to unmute, um, Caitlin. Caitlin, you should be able to unmute. You could just hit the space bar. Um, give me one second. Hi there. Okay, great. I got you. Hi, good evening. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, I'm here just to talk about one thing, which is regarding the music and gatherings in the backyard of Blue Door. Um, over the years, I've watched how this committee has reviewed numerous applications and understand that loud music is frequently the biggest concern, as well as how it impacts our community. Uh, Blue Door often plays loud music into the evening and at times past their restaurant hours. Um, the outdoor structure that was built in the back appears to amplify the sound and um, the sound is being played from outdoor speakers as well. Um, since my bedroom faces the backyard, I often hear the music being played as often as if it feels like it's in my own home. The bass is typically pretty loud. Um, since 2001, 2021, sorry, um, I filed complaints through 311, through the community board and directly through Blue Door. Uh, they've often been unresponsive and sometimes even ignore the request to lower or turn off the music. So given this has been ongoing for two years now, um, I'm just asking the committee to consider the removal of the outdoor speakers and to maintain the expectation that the doors and windows remain closed when music is being played, just like we have the expectations for other restaurants in the neighborhood. Thank you, Kate. Can I speak? 
Go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, my, my, my outside music is no louder than, say, Cebu's outdoor music in the front when I passed by and had food there. Um, we never play music past our operating hours because we close up at that time. There's nobody back there. We close up. So I don't know if maybe she's hearing somebody else's music. She was, um, she was also, mentioning parties. Do you have parties back there? Not at night. Only during the day. But also she's called the police at, you know, and filed a complaint at 12 or 1 o'clock in the afternoon. But I've, I've invited the cops in and I've asked them, like, please let me know if this is too loud. And they've come in and they've actually said to me, this is fine to us. This is not past what should be. And they've left. And it's just frustrating because it's one person making a complaint. That backyard has saved us during COVID. Um, I am like a member of, you know, Third Avenue. I, I'm, I, I would understand if we were being extremely loud. Um, I have two small Bose outdoor sp speakers where there's no amplifiers. It's not like bass, it's two small speakers. Um, so I don't understand. She's called the restaurant on private, like back to back to back to back to back, like just to pick up and hang up and use our phones. So I think that there's like a lot of um, like unfairness to the business in general. Um, I, if I had multiple complaints from other people, I, I would obviously revisit and I would say that, you know, like maybe we are playing the music loud, but it's, it's music that's loud enough where you could still hear the server in front of you. So I, we're not throwing parties. We're having baby showers back there. They're not like, like, you know, like people getting wild and drinking and, and screaming and stuff. Barbara, you have your hand raised. Yeah, um, you know, no restaurants are supposed to have any outdoor music. So the name Cebu is not a good thing. Okay, I'm just telling you. I know other restaurants do. You walk outside and you hear it. They're not supposed to do it. But I do know that, you know, sound travels. Mm -hmm. And when it's during the day, you know, when you have trucks and cars and buses and people, it's very different than when it's at night bouncing off the brick walls, you know, from one backyard to the next. There was just an incident um, about a month ago where people on Shore Road were complaining about, you know, loud mm -hmm. music was coming from the bay. And the city councilman and other people were saying, we don't know where it's coming from. And it was a car with a stereo in Staten Island. And because it was opened, it was just floating right across the water. So, you know, when you have open spaces, music amplifies itself. There's nothing to absorb it. So, you know, you know, you shouldn't be having music outside of any establishment whatsoever. And, and, and that would end the problem. Well, I, I have a retractable awning that closes the room, like which would enclose the music in. Um, when, you know, we have parties and stuff like that, especially when the sun is out and it's beaming and hot, or even at night, if it's too cool. Um, most of the times we, we close the retractable, so it is closed. Um, well, we talk you know, about doors and windows. So if you have an awning, it's not the same as a door or a window that maintains it, you know, maintains the sound with some absorption. I mean, it's, it's, it's like closed, like it's enclosed. But it's not a, not, not a solid, you know, door or, or cement structure. So sound travels and then it either goes right through her window if the windows are open or it, it, it hits the glass. I mean, people have to sleep yeah. and then sound travels and amplifies. I know, I understand. But if it was at like one o'clock in the morning, I would understand she's making noise complaints at 12 p.m. Okay. At 1 p.m. Um, Caitlin still has her hand raised. Yes, Caitlin. Hi, you can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Yeah, so I just want to make a note that essentially for, so what we're saying is if we're opening this up, we've essentially been utilizing the backyard illegally for the last two years. Am I correct? No, there were special provisions okay. um, during COVID um, okay. that permitted um, outdoor use. Listen, uh, yeah, Blue Door, uh, like Blue Door, is definitely a respected restaurant, right? But this is when it impacts at night. Is where like I draw a line. I completely draw a line. And when there's reference to phone calls, there's often that the phone calls are not being picked up, or they're ignoring the calls. Um, it has a bit of problem as a late whatsoever. So I just want to take that as like, 
a note that for sure they've been incredible neighbors as of late. Um, but this has been a pattern and it is a concern as to how this impacts um, my, my, my quality of life. Um, and, and it could impact others who may not have actually said anything because they don't know that they need to contact their community board. So I just want that to be a consideration when it comes down to the noise levels at night and how it impacts my quality of life as being a lifetime resident of Bay Ridge. That's all. I understand, and I'm not trying to be an unfair neighbor. It's just frustrating because the times that the cops have been called and when I have been called by her, they have been during the day. I've called which... late at night. I've called late at night. I can even tell you when I've called because I can look back at 311. And so I've called late at night and there are times where I have shown up at late at night, which to ask you guys to lower it because you wouldn't pick up your phone. And well, that's just the reality. Told, well, from what I was told, you stomped into the restaurant and screamed in front of customers to lower okay. the music and left. All right. All right. Any other questions? Um, Lori? Lori has her hand. The bottom line is that it should be no music on the outside. That's it. Lori? Um, so, um, I mean, we often hear this tension of, and it really shouldn't be, right, of, of places on Third Avenue because it's where we have our residential with commercial overlay, right? So you have restaurants and you have houses behind them. And like in my, you know, it, to my view, it's just, it's a mutually beneficial relationship, right? You've got a great place on Third Avenue, you've got all these nice people who live around there who want to just walk over and have dinner. But we always kind of run into this issue, you know, with the noise level. But I think that, you know, if, you know, maybe just like how good fences make good neighbors, maybe some good stipulations can, you know, help out here. Um, you know, I understand, you know, you have a business and, you know, you want to run it in a nice way and have a good experience for your um, patrons and have a nice atmosphere with music. So my question to you is just to kind of like maybe build some bridges <laughs> as opposed to everyone just arguing. Um, like is, you know, in terms of your business model, you know, um, so you want to have parties during the day and that's wonderful because, you know, you're not bothering the neighbors at night. And it's very considerate. Um, in terms of having the outdoor music during regular operating hours, like, you know, how valuable is that too? Like, I'm just kind of wondering if there's any kind of, you know, middle ground here where that might make everybody happy in terms of, you know, the outdoor music and noise level. So I would be, I, I, well, right now the music is really low. It has been, I don't think that I've been an unfair neighbor as of lately to Caitlin. I, I haven't heard anything from her. Oh, so I don't mean that. I don't mean that. I'm not talking about, you That's know, specifically as to whatever she said. I'm just saying like overall, you know, in terms of how you run your business and everything, like, um, you know, is that, is that something like really you feel like, look, sometimes you've got a business and you're like, you know, I, do I really, you know, the music's so low. Do I really care if it's on at all? You know, sometimes you're like, no, I, you know, that's definitely a part of the ambiance that I need. I'm just trying to feel you out and, you know, but yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, the music is definitely like important, like to the ambiance. It's like, like Greek music. Now we play like a couple of English stuff, but I am trying to elevate the restaurant right now a little bit and shy away from the fast Greek food. Um, I have changed my chef, so I'm kind of in the middle of like trying to elevate it a little. I'm not planning on throwing like wild parties or have wild, crazy people screaming. Um, you know, I will let my staff know to shut the music off by 10 o'clock. Um, but we normally don't ever leave the music on past 11 on Friday and Saturday, which is our operating hours. But then um, during the week, we shut it at 10 o'clock and on Sundays at nine because we close. Okay, so I mean, maybe is there like some room here for like steps as to outdoor music, maybe a shut off time or, you know, like you say, you play, you know, light, maybe it would give, you know, the residents maybe a little more comfort level if you say, okay, we're only really going to play like light Greek, you know what I mean, like to give some kind of uh, comfort level to, to the neighbors and, you know, that they know 
going forward, this is what they, you know, can expect. And I mean, look, everybody's going to have a little bit of disruption, um, you know, and I guess if everybody's a little bit unhappy, but mostly happy, that's a good medium, um, which is something that, you know, maybe we can reach. Chris, you have any ideas? Yeah, I'm thinking, you know, all outdoor music will cease at 10 o'clock, no later than 10. Um, I know Barbara says you're not really supposed to have outdoor music. I mean, that's what we basically say to everybody. Music know, will be they're... played indoors with windows and doors shut. But I, I believe it's with the permit, Josephine, or without a permit, that the New York City ordinance is 10 o'clock. Is that when you have a permit Permit or outdoor? Um, right. So the NYPD rules are that all amplified sound when you have a permit ends at 10 o'clock. But the outdoor dining, um, no amplified music is not permitted. I don't have ampl anything amplified. They're like speakers that are like this big that's outside. Amplified. That's it. Yeah, I understand, but that still that's what produces they call sound. It. Oh, okay, not, okay. Yeah. You know, I thought that you meant like a like a no. like a bass or so. okay, okay. No, you know, really, no speakers are really supposed to be outside. We've had similar issues with uh, Bocce and other restaurants in the area. <laughs> So I understand that any ideas? <laughs> so just no outdoor music is permitted. I mean, that would mean that I'd have to take it down. I mean, a lot of people have their parties back there and they expect to have like music playing sometimes mm -hmm. like, you know, like like their their kind of music. If they bring a speaker, um, it just sucks because the back door backyard is really what has kept us afloat during COVID. Um, and I fear that like changing everything outside would um, stop people from wanting to dine out there. But the New York City is no outdoor music. Now that's technically for everybody. Now I know you might pass a restaurant; they may have a speaker outside toward the street to lure people in. They're not even supposed to do that. But to say that you want to have parties with music out there, that's against, I, Josephine, you know, correct my words, the New York City law, correct? Yes. So we as a community board cannot just say, okay, we'll override that because you want to have a party. Bring the parties on the indoors and have the diners sit outside, switch it up. It's, it's not that easy to do that because everybody doesn't want to sit inside. They want the outdoor. The answer is no outdoor music, and when the do window when the music plays, all windows and doors are to remain closed. That's a stipulation. She agrees. She agrees. If not, so I'm just curious. The awning is a like hard structure, and, and when it's closed, you really can't hear it. The sides are cut off with um, like um, uh, what's the clear plastic? Plexiglass. No, this would have to be your actual establishment. Not any other structures would bring you into the buildings departments for having. You don't want to get into that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, you know, I, mean, I don't know if there's a way to soundproof it to, to yeah. sound from traveling. I, you know, I don't know. Whether so you do you walls, look whether into that. Right. I, I, I have have no you can't do that unless you go for a permit to add, if you own the building. You can't do that. So I cannot play like like very light. No little music, music in the back music. no music You're not supposed to so, and i know you're saying cebu did that and i i know i pass other places but you know when we we notice it and people tell us we go and we try to speak with them and they lower it down and they bring it back up but it's not a deliberate i'm having a party and i and they want music the answer to that is new york city says no i understand i just think that it's kind of unfair to see that happen for other like businesses and then it to only affect mine because one person had complained. I'd be willing to shut it off at a certain time. I'd be willing to lower it even lower where you, it's literally like talking. I mean, if you can't barely hear it from outside, what's the difference? All right. Um, Chris, uh, Caitlin has her hand raised. Oh, Sandy, I'm sorry, Sandy has, Sandy and then Caitlin, Sandy. Okay, thanks, Josephine. Uh, Josephine, j just a question. Is, is, is the New York uh, City law, is it no music at all at any time? In, in the outdoor dining areas. In the outdoor dining area. Uh, I, I was going to say, if 
if, if uh, Blue Doors parties are in the afternoon, let's say from one to four or something like that, and they want uh, some music and, and maybe they can shut it off by seven, if if that would be if that would help the the neighbor at all and and, and not disturbing her uh, her sleep at night, but that's not what New York City law says. Uh, that, that's why I asked the question. Yeah, I mean, I think we could ask in the spirit of community cooperation, but the um the rules, I mean, the rules say no, you know, no outdoor music, no outdoor music, no speakers, you know. And we've had other businesses where we've asked them to take down the speakers, um. You know, before yeah, I just thing. think that it's just not fair to see it still happen when I can't do it. Like, like I, like other businesses with liquor licenses, and then you guys are telling me if the music is so low and the top is covered and nobody can hear it, why would it make a difference? Because it's not my law. It's not me making the decision. It's the city of New York made that decision. Yeah, I'm just confused. So, like, I if just... I was in my backyard in my house and playing music at 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, I am allowed to do that until correct. a certain time, correct? Correct. But not a restaurant. It's not a business. You're not a restaurant. You're, you're, you're a private for, citizen. A, a New York State you're... license. And you know, a lot of things are unfair. A lot of things we don't like. But if you're applying for a, a liquor license, once again, you would trying to say I will abide by the laws of the city and state of New York. Not that it's not fair to me. It's not fair to a, a lot of people would love to do that, but we have well, we have community people we represent. So this is a change of the method of your operation by utilizing the backyard. Okay. So I mean I can read off a stipulation if you want to rehear it and let the board decide. The premise will operate as a restaurant. There will be no, well, they already have a license. So the owner or manager will be on site during all hours of operations. Your hours of operation are Monday, you're closed. Tuesday, Thursday, you're 12 to 10 p.m. Friday, Saturday, you're 12 to 11. Sunday, you're 12 to 9. Uh, your outdoor dining is 12 to 9.30. Month, Tuesday through Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you're 12 to 10.30. And Sunday, you're 12 to 8.30. There will be no smoking permitted. The doors and windows should remain closed with any amplified music. Background recorded and all music sound levels will remain below the level permitted by New York City noise code. There will be at least 20% visibility view into the establishment eye level. The applicant agrees that should it change its method of operation will give notice and meet with the community board. Outdoor music is not permitted. There will be no outdoor music. And I mean, as a community, that's fine. I'm sorry, I just... No, that's it's, all right. It's, hold it's, on, hold on a sec before you speak, you know, and that's that's my motion. And any seconds? Barbara seconds. Any discussion? Can I speak or... Hey, one second. Of... One second. I'll, I'll give you a key. One second. Okay, since no discussion, so... We look to deny your application unless you agree to the following stipulation that I had just read. Now you can speak. Go ahead, Kiaki. I'm sorry, it's just like, it's like, I, I'm kind of gonna wanna push for other places that also have music playing outside. It's not, I can't walk into a, a place that's two blocks away from mine playing music and I'm unable to play music. Well, Joseph, well, Third Avenue, you write these down so we can go to those restaurants and say that she's just ratted them all out. I mean, I mean, it's that that's the truth, because somebody's ratting me out that now I get that taken away. It's, it's really this is this, this is New York City, New York State law. And, and the, these are the stipulations that we do for every restaurant. It's not just for you. These are a, a format that we use because we abide by the New York City and New York State laws. It's not for you. Uh, Lori, so I, I I do understand what you're saying, and I do understand your frustration, um, because you know, look, as you know, Barbara and the others are saying, this is the law. Like we are members of the community board, right? We are like appointed members of the city, so we're not allowed to say to you, yes, you can have it outside. We're just not allowed to say that because the law doesn't let you say it. And I do understand your frustration. You're sitting here saying, but everyone else is doing it. That observation is just really that everyone else is not abiding 
by the law. And I get it. I get what you're saying. And, you know, it's not like, as you said, you're going to start like calling up the police and saying, hey, go bother the guy down the block. I get you. No, no, I know that. I know that, of course. And I, I get you. I get what you're saying. Um, you know, it, it's it's an unfortunate circumstance. But the fact is, whether or not we have a stipulation saying that you can have outdoor music or not, it, the law says you're not allowed to. So, you know, it's like it, it's, you know, that's just it, it, I can't say yes. Let's put it that way. It, it's OK. Yeah. Okay. OK. Any questions on the motion? Do you agree to my uh, stipulation? Yes. Okay. Did anyone second it? Yes, Bob. That's right, I'm sorry. I'm losing it tonight. Mm. All right. Any discussion? All the motion? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain. Motion passes. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. I'm sorry it didn't go the way you would like it, but I got this. She got what she in wanted. some ways my hands are tied. She got what she wanted. Mm-hmm. Well, she got some outdoor dining. Any old business? Any new business? I just want to bring up something. To, uh, we have a new uh, commanding officer at Six Eight Precinct, uh, Captain uh, Kristen Schaefer. Yes. Right. And in the future, I'd like to invite her to some of our meetings to go over some of the crime statistics within the area. Yep, we will do that. I'm meeting with her tomorrow, so I will bring that. Great. I also just want to mention Sheila Doherty from the Sixty Eight Precinct Community Council is also attending tonight's meeting. Yeah. Oh. Um, just yes. one thing, Chris. And mm -hmm. um, the the, uh, I, I, the I mean, she's right. There are other restaurants where you walk along Third Avenue, Fifth Avenue, and you see a little speaker, and they do play music on the outside. And maybe Josephine, as we see it, we should call you and just let you give them a call and say, you know, cut it, because it. it, it, it she's not lying. They do. Yeah. And they not lying. No. They really <laughs> shouldn't be doing that. And, you know, they come to our faces and they say, oh, sure, sure, sure. Of course we won't. Of course we won't. And how many times do we go to Bocce and have to go there and basically tell the manager to take those speakers right down because he was blasting them? I mean, she, she's, you know, she's not making it up, but it's, it's the law. When we do see it, we do make a phone call to the managers and, you know, they abide for a while. But, you know, we have to work with the law. We can't just say, OK, you know, everybody's doing it so we could do it. So I understand her feelings about she wants to have a little ethnic music. I would love to have a little tarantella in my backyard, in my little restaurant. But we should, you know, we're walking along Third Avenue and uh, there are several, not just Siebel. There are several where they have their little speaker on the doors open. So we should let you know and just make a, a phone call on a letter saying it's been observed. That's Fair? good. Agreed. Now, I mean, I think we've um, done that, I think in the most part, you know, in the past, you know, we give, you know, a heads up and Josephine would reach out, um, you know, to those restaurants. But I mean, I do, I definitely understand her frustration in that, um, you know, it, it's kind of like, wait a minute, am I the only one here following the rules, you know? Right. Um, and we have we always run, run up against this and I guess it comes down to it, it's an enforcement issue because most of the time, you know, look, if nobody, if you're not really bothering anybody, you know, no, nobody's going to be calling up and, and, and saying anything. Nobody's going to be bothering you. Right. I mean, there's like small infractions that go on. I'm not saying we condone it. I'm just saying that it happens. Um, you know, and I mean, but, but I do understand that frustration because, you know, I mean, like Barbara said, you know, I can walk right down third Avenue and there's a whole bunch of places that have music going on. Um, and they shouldn't, but they do. And we've called them, some of them, many, 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 many times <laughs> and talk to them when they come for their renewal. Um, and I, I can definitely see that frustration. Um, it, it is a problem that we have been unable to solve. You know, we've been playing it on the, out the street side during the day, you know, a pizzeria, 
it's different than you know nighttime when it's bouncing in the courtyard of the backyards meeting when it's 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 going right in. I I, I know that feeling. You know, it's different, but yeah, and sound does travel um, oddly. You know, too. You know, I'm working on two with two businesses now with resident complaints that are hearing not music noise but fan noise, and you know, very oddly, I went to the guy's house and I couldn't believe what I heard. You know. And you go to the restaurant and it doesn't sound that way, you know, but noise does travel and DEP helps, you know, to identify. And even sitting here now, we have an establishment right next door to us. And there are times on Thursdays, if I'm here late, I cannot concentrate. I go next door, the the restaurant is empty and the music doesn't sound loud when I'm walking in there. But if you, you know, I made, I made him come into my office. You just can't believe this, the sounds you hear you know, that travels through the wall. So, um, you know, the, hopefully they'll make some modifications, but I, I do understand that. Sandy? Thanks, Josephine. Uh, just for, for, for the next time that we meet with Vincent, I would appreciate if we had the 68 precinct with us so we can get an insight on what uh, what, calls they, call. what, yeah, what calls they've been getting, what visits have been made, and mm-hmm. uh, secondly, I just want to apologize to all, all the board members for me losing my cool. It, it, it was just, you know, you, you can only take so much of being interrupted. I, I, I saw him interrupt Laurie. I saw him interrupt Barbara. I saw him interrupt uh, Josephine and Chris. And it's always, yeah, but. And I, I, I just couldn't take it anymore. So I apologize to all of you for losing my cool. But uh, hopefully at the next uh, meeting, we'll have uh, the, the CTA precinct so we can get a real handle on what's going on. And um Hopefully we won't have to have this yet, but again. Any other things? New old business? No. Motion to adjourn. Yep. Okay. Nick.